think is going to be dueling benches tonight as well. Look, I'm all for that. Champ Week has the same feel even without people in the stands. We miss everybody in the stands, but the benches are keeping up their end of the bargain. And here is a kid from Rochester, Jonathan Williams, who you're going to want to get to know if Buffalo wins this game. He is a dynamic scorer at nearly 18 per game. And the Preston kid, he's got the hands of a magician or a safe cracker, John. I, I, I don't know many safe crackers, Jason, but you seem pretty informed. I am. I, I do a lot of reading on people like that as Mbala has the rebound. He had 20 of them yesterday in the overtime win against Akron. There are some really talented dudes on the floor. And Mbala yeah. played for Chris Beard at Texas Tech. And here goes Preston hanging just outside of the lane. Yeah, there are going to be certain matchups you got to pay attention to. And Ball is one of those guys who may have an advantage. You've got to seek out that advantage. But the way Buffalo wants to play with pace and move it, it may be hard to have that kind of patience. Driving kick from Javon Graves, and he sent it off to the corner for an opening three for Laquil Harden at a sophomore out of Philadelphia. And Buffalo doing a good job of just taking defense away with the bounce and then turning, throwing back to the strong side where defense was sagging inside the paint. Ohio's trailed for 13 seconds the entire MAC tournament, by the way, after dismantling at Kent State in the first round. And then that win yesterday against the one seed. Jonathan Williams went up only to have gravity take hold. Hey, Jim Weitzel in the U uh, Lewis University Hall of Fame in the Chicago suburbs. He took that non-Division I school to a number of NCAA tournaments, and he takes over for Nate Oates. And they play a similar style from when Nate was there, John. Well, I think you have to. you got to capitalize on the success that you're taking over. I think that, that's that far too often you see someone come into a successful program and kind of rewrite the identity of the team. That's not the case here with Weitzel. And I think he's done a great job of just picking up where some of those good coaches like Nate Oates have left off. Don't you think that might just be because he's a veteran coach and knows that he doesn't have to just put his mark on because he's got to? Well, I think you also don't take that this job if it's a fresh build. I mean, he's coming in and, and taking advantage of the strength that's already there. Otherwise, hire a 30-year-old. Well, I, that sounds like ageism to me, honestly, so I'd, <laughs> I wouldn't dare do that. Rick Pitino just took Iona to the NCAA tournament. There's a missed three from Ohio and Ben Vanderplas, the junior. These two teams split in the regular season. Buffalo, a big win late in the year as Ohio's had two COVID pauses. We got an offensive foul right away the basket. It goes against Javon Graves. And this is just good disruption by switching defenses. You change up your defense, it forces Buffalo to stop and figure out what you're doing before they attack. And with that disruption, you're in position as a defense. You can take that charge. And I love Vanderplas, by the way. This is a kid who can space it offensively. You get involved with him in a ball screen situation. He makes great reads. He can also post up. And when Preston and Vanderplas are playing off each other, they're dangerous. He almost just skidded into Lake Erie off that charge, by the way. That was a slip and slide reaction as Preston misses the look for three. And here comes Jonathan Williams. Only to turn it back outside and have it taken away by Vanderplas, who found Preston, and there's the sleight of hand from Preston. Great hit ahead. Yeah, Preston does such a great job passing the basketball, but you can only be a great passer if you have great feel. Otherwise, it's just the easy pass. Preston, again, moves the game with his passing. He seems like watching him on tape, he does it at a lot of angles, too, John. Well, that's just, he kind of has the, you talk about that point guard, eyes in the back of your head, and that's the feel you talk about. Great instincts, and yeah, we talk about these point guards with great instincts, yet they don't know how to create plays. You know, players that know how to make plays have great instincts, even if it's getting to a 50-50 ball. He knows where his players are, like great quarterbacks know where their guy's going to be open, and they throw to the open spot. That's a lot of what Jason Preston does. Got a hand in there. That that young man, Jason Preston, had 52 points in high school in yep. Florida. 52 total points. He was extraordinarily under-recruited. As that on the doorstep won't go for Dwight Wilson. And this is going to stay Ohio ball. We'll tell you the story of Preston. Three. Yeah. 
let, let me get it. You say he was under recruited and he scored 52 points in high school. Let's establish a baseline of understanding for parents out there. If your kid scores 52 points in high school, don't expect them to be Jason Preston. Just, just encourage the hard work. That's right, but but every once in a while, that's the great thing about this game is that you yes. can become Jason Preston, which is a, a fantastic takeaway. And if he ends up in the NCAA tournament, I would wager America is going to fall in love with that young man wearing zero for Ohio. Here is Mbala, and he had it stripped away. Vanderplas ends up with it. Ohio teams won eight of nine. Buffalo's won seven straight into this MAC final that Buffalo has owned in recent years. Vanderplas got wow. by Mbala and dropped it off for Wilson. I mean, great poise from Vanderplas to understand. Look, defense isn't fully committing, so he's got to take it in a step further. He made a great bounce pass and easy layup. A lot of action at the rim we expect tonight. Both these teams get significant points from two as that foul is going to go against Buffalo. And we will tell you the story of young Jason Preston. It is magnificent. We'll take you on a journey with him after this. The game he started his senior year was senior day. That was just an honorific sort of thing. And John Crispin, he ends up going to Believe Prep Academy in Tennessee. He gets seen on the, uh, you know, the circuit there with the C team there, and then eventually Ohio finds him, and they couldn't be happier. Well, I think there's something to kids that just simply get it. When you see them, you know there's something special about them. You may not be able to figure out what it is yet because you don't see the production, you don't see the statistics to really justify any sort of commitment. But you see a kid that just makes the game easier, and the game comes easy to him. At times, you may even ask him to be more aggressive than he's been. I think he's a special kid. All he's done has gotten better throughout his career. And I got to say, I still think there's a lot of room for him to grow, particularly physically. A lot of people say NBA talent. You see that? Absolutely. Uh, again, that's where the, the physical part comes in. He's just got to continue to get stronger. His feel for the game almost makes it so he doesn't have to be a terrific athlete. He's a good athlete, not a great athlete. But he makes up for it with that feel and those instincts. His team up by five, and we were talking to Jason Preston earlier today, and we told you what he's been through in his basketball career. But we asked him, you know, who who will be watching today? Who will you be thinking about? And he immediately went to his mother, Judith, yeah. who passed away when he was a junior in high school. She died of cancer when Jason was a junior. They were so close. And there he is going to work. I mean, she was the one that bought him a basketball hoop and taught him to watch guys like LeBron James. Yeah, not a bad guy to watch, just particularly the way LeBron passed the ball. Something Jason Preston said as you see him with his mother, Judith. I mean, those are real-life things that you know, most kids don't have to deal with. And he's overcome a lot, and, man, he's coming out on top. He brings so much unbridled joy to the point guard position. He's always looking to play the angle, and here he goes in a two-man game. Wilson was denied. This is Preston off the baseline to fill it up. I mean, look, Jason, I, I kind of feel badly. Look, we have two good basketball teams. Buffalo, the, the second seed in this conference. We probably should be talking about them more, but you've got to stop Jason Preston. He's now got 1,002 points, just eclipsed the 1,000-point mark with that three. Nicole Harden had missed a jumper. Buffalo's not a great three-point shooting team. They're about 150th in the country. They don't get a lot of their points from that. As Vanderplas oh sets up Preston, who was willing to shoot from the shores of Lake Erie. How about Vanderplas there with the defense job? Oh, he's just been active. Another guy with good feel for the game. Probably going to be a travel. You were right on it. Hey, we got all sorts of college basketball coming up on ESPN. Champ Week continues, and tonight, thank you for my life. Oregon State and Colorado bid Steelers, the Beavers against the Buffaloes, presented by New York Life. Thank you for New York Conference Life. Conference of Champions. <laughs> thank you. Cacti and the Pterodactyls. Game, uh, game tips up 10.30. That's all you got? Yeah, that's all I got.
Dave Cash, Bill Walton will have the call, and we'll see if Bill remembers anybody who he's worked with name tonight. Preston to take away for Ohio, and the Bobcats up by 10. A long drought for Buffalo, John. Yeah, just to summarize the first eight minutes of this game, or seven and a half, eight minutes of this game, Buffalo hasn't been able to get enough stops to get the rhythm and pace that they want. So really got to get it done defensively first, but the ball's moving freely, and Ohio's getting whatever shots they want. Now second opportunity. Yeah, and that Bertram, who couldn't come up with that rebound, had one of their biggest offensive rebounds last night in the semifinal round. Usually a very sturdy senior, but he couldn't clamp down on that rebound. Man, Buffalo right now with seven turnovers. A lot of that is a byproduct of having to play against a set defense. You score a basket, you're playing against a set defense. As Vanderbus gets another one to go. Now, Ohio can shoot. They are 35.5%. That's 64th in the country in three-point shooting. And Vanderplas is one of those guys, a stretch four, who's at 35% for the year. And Bala whirling. That's explosive, John. Yeah, I'd say Mbala's seeking out that opportunity. They got a little bit of space. I like when the, the offense simply clears. They realize he's got an advantage so long as you create space for him. Now, Vanderplas did a good job of, of gapping. That's gapping. You don't get into the body on the spin. You got to take that step back. You anticipate the spin and then try to take it away. But it, it, Josh Mbala's got an advantage, and he's got to continue to seek out those opportunities where he can take advantage of that advantage. I won't say advantage again. That will be to our advantage as Buffalo breaks a 16-0 run for Ohio there. Hey, Mbala, two games in the back tournament, 39 points, 39 rebounds. He is non-stop energy, a young man out of Bordeaux, France. He moved there at age eight to be with his family from Detroit, learned how to be a guard, and then grew so much. He's still got guard attributes, but he was forced into forward because of his size. Well, it's like every tall kid, they have to be the center on the team. A little different nowadays. Tall guys want to be guards. Guards just wish they were bigger. Oh, my goodness. A hard cut to the rim. And Vanderplas in Ohio have a 20-7 to lead. And Jim Weitzel is going to take a timeout. Team that likes to run, John Crispin, but they haven't had opportunities so far. Yeah, and there's a challenge now. You look, you're down 13 points. You may have to run the risk by forcing pace of going down even more. You've got to force pace by getting up and down the floor. At times, it's shooting quickly, but also defensively. You want to encourage some quick shots. If you can encourage quick shots with defense in position to get the rebound, it's going to lead to your break, and it's going to give you the pace that you need. It's not just not having pace right now for Buffalo. It's not having rhythm. And this is a team that needs pace to find rhythm. So how do you create that in the half court? I think, you, if anything, run and jump. I would get the ball out of Jason Preston's hands first and foremost and make somebody else make a quick play. So you have to pick a player who you want to, or you want to encourage to attack the basket. And it may look like a bad defensive play, but you're actually getting the pace you need. That was a new tremendous world. It's, it's new defensive way of thinking, play. Jason. Yeah, well, it's, it's a whole new world with you. Yes. <laughs> it's a magic ride we're on. There's a takeaway by Mbala and Buffalo. It's been more than six and a half minutes, says our wonderful statistician, Ed Spita, since Buffalo had a bucket. Yeah, we talked a lot about Ronaldo Segu, and he hasn't really had many opportunities to impact this game. And there are times where you, as a, as a lead guard, need to feel that in your team and take over. Clear a space, clear a side, attack the basket, sit down in the paint, watch what the defense does. You learn a lot when you get inside the paint. Look at the amount of bodies. There are four bodies, four Ohio jerseys in the middle of the paint. So if you sit down, you realize there are open bodies around the perimeter for the Buffalo Bulls. Part of this, too, you feel like it's Graves, who's not a very good free throw shooter, misses 57%. Part of this is these teams have seen each other so much this year and just recently as well. Everybody knows what they're doing, what everybody's doing. So then ultimately the best team goes out and wins. I mean, that, that's the best thing about these conference tournaments. We talk a lot about the familiarity, but within that familiarity, it, it leads to adjustments and counters. And I always say the highest levels in college basketball, you don't win with set plays, you win with adjustments. And that's how you win here. Ohio Bobcats out of Athens, Ohio. 
Trying to get back to the NCAA tournament for the first time in nine seasons. Their leader, Jason Preston, off for Vanderplas with Mbala in his pocket. Vanderplas willing to drive on Mbala, and he challenged enough. Mbala loves that spin. He scores again. Yeah, they, they need to learn. He likes that spin going back to his left, so you need to just gap. Jump back. If, if he's going to spin, don't give him body. If you give him body, he knows exactly where to spin. If you jump back, you can take that ball away as he makes his turn. Maybe you got to travel, too, while you're at it, Ryan. Yes. Pull the chair. Here's Preston parachutes another one in. Jason Preston, the star of this Ohio team, has already put up nine points and four assists. I mean, look, I, he's, he's so good, it's humbling. You know, it, it, so has, his progress has been humbling. But to see what he's doing at this level against one of the best teams in this conference all season, it's impressive. As I said for Buffalo, you got to seek out your mismatches. You got to seek out your advantages, and this is an advantage. Josh and has got the advantage offensively, so long as he has the space. And we all know what this advantage looks like. This is a pro, and as he continues to get that body right, develop the body, develop the physicality, they'll play at the next level. It wouldn't be surprising to see him in the NBA. And to think of what he's come from. And the fact that he had to build his own highlight reels, this is out of bounds, going to stay with Buffalo 7 to shoot. Preston had to build his own highlight reel on Twitter. He didn't, he didn't have anybody on him, so he said, I need some tape, and he built it on his own. See, they calling that out on Ohio. It looked like maybe off the knee. I'm always good when I see it three times in slow-mo. This one, Jim White said, won't want to see in slow motion. That was tossed out of bounds cleanly. And this is something, in a situation like this, where you're down 12 points, you've got an Ohio team that's playing with great confidence. You, you have to start to figure out how to chip away at the confidence and swagger, not just chip away at the score. I know it sounds like it's an easy thing, but you have to play against an opponent's strength. And right now, the strength is not their ability to score. It's the fact that they're confidence and playing with great swagger. The question is, how do you do that if you can't stop them defensively, though? And here goes Preston again. Miss the runner. Rebound for Fagan. Well, why not jump? Why not run and jump and get the ball out of Jason Preston's hand? Why not make someone else the initiator? I, would, I wouldn't allow him to get the ball inbound. It's on the, on the baseline. After a made shot, double him. Don't allow him to get the ball. Be disruptive in the sense that you're taking away the best option on the floor that also creates for everybody else. Now, Ohio's done that pretty well with Segu as Buffalo's missed yep. nine of their last ten shots. Ohio's done a good job of sagging back as Jason Preston just continues to get where he wants, but Ohio, Ohio defensively is waiting for Buffalo to come up with that ball. Ohio defensively has sagged back, forcing them to take shots, and he's right now being down, it seems as if Buffalo doesn't want to shoot the ball. Well, that was great defense, getting back on Segu, by the way, who wanted the baseline. Trayvon Fagan claims a three, rebound Preston. Now, the other thing to point out, uh, that Ohio's doing very well in the zone, they're actually maintaining rebounding position. A lot of times teams go to the zone, and they don't block out well. Well, they don't block out well because they're not covering a man, they're covering an area. Ohio mm. has kept a, a full awareness of where all the threats are when a shot goes up. To your point here, Preston's got a pretty free look at the floor. They do get the block there, Buffalo does, as Ohio got inside one more time. And there's another takeaway. Roderick for Ohio, and that's a trap. We can't, I mean, look, I, I almost feel badly, but who cares? Don't. The kid's that good. Jason Preston just continuing to roll. Pretty floater. This will work at the next level. Preston, nine points, three rebounds, four assists, and oh yeah, three steals. You, all you ask is, uh, of a great player is to impact the game, create opportunities, make some shots when you need to, move the game around, manipulate the game if you can. Jason Preston has done a little bit of all of that, and he's really difficult to stop. He just drew three, dumped it down, easy layup, making the game easy for his teammates and fun for, for us to watch. Yeah, I thought Robert Preston was the great manipulator as Harold Hill in the oh, music band, but I think Jason Preston 
might be more of that. That's one of those you use on ESPN News before we get bumped over to ESPN 2. I think that's uh, the think... ESPN seniors. I think that's the... <laughs> That's right. I don't know if we have that yet, but it's coming. I'll be calling bingo coming up in the <laughs> overtime period. Ohio by 12, and a foul called. Embala was trying to wrap around the baseline. Embala's playing with a lot of heart right now, and the rest of Buffalo just has not done much offensively. So I like the fact that Embala tried to finish that, even though he got fouled, tried to finish that with a hard flush. That becomes a little bit of a statement, not only to your opponent, but to your own team. This is Mbala clearing yep. out space, and he draws the whistle. Maybe it's a statement for himself, too, as he picked up second on Granger. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how Ohio just to that type of offense, where you're going to feed it down low, whether it's in man or in zone. You're going to have to provide some sort of help, but you, you better make sure you know who you're helping off of. That was a third foul on Granger, by the way, not the second, so his third. Hey, Selection Sunday, tomorrow, 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Bracketology. Reese Davis, Jay Billis, LaFonso Ellis, Seth Greenberg, and Dickie V. They'll break down the brackets with some special guests as well. They got a lot of fun planned. And then uh, Sports Center starts at 5.15 Eastern time. Reese Davis and the guys reveal the field of 68, as we see who is in. Coming up tomorrow after a long season, but a fun champ week. Iona's in. Rick Pitino has got a fifth team in the NCAA tournament. Well, they played 16 games all year. You think about the challenge of developing a team with only playing 16 games. And oh, by the way, you didn't have, you know, preseason conditioning and practices with your team and individual workouts the way you normally do. So you don't even have the time to establish those dynamics to figure it out at this point after 16 games. It's pretty darn good. Uh, to, to that point, John, Ohio went on two COVID pauses from February 2nd yep. to the 23rd, and then they didn't play from the 27th to March 11th as well, so a rusty team, but, you know, maybe a fresh team right now, too, because they just didn't play a whole lot of games down the stretch here. Vanderplas whirling left it wanting, and the rebound kicked around to Ohio. Roderick to pull up. Jason, how different was that possession when you consider a bunch of the other previous possessions in this game? I mean, completely different. No Jason Preston on the floor. It's just amazing how much the kid is impacting the game. That offensive possession had nothing going for Ohio. Question is, who will be that leader on the floor? And that leaner is up and good. Sears in Ohio with a 13-point lead. And that's what Buffalo has to be better in transition defensively. You need to encourage that pace. That tempo is what you want, but you can't allow them to score that easily. The other guy's been real quiet. Jonathan Williams, one of the leaders on this team, as Sagu carved the lane, and he will go to the free throw line with two shots. Those two guys, 11 and 10 in white and blue, have not scored so far for Buffalo. Well, I really feel like being down 13 is almost coaxing them into a more efficient approach. And that's not going to be what gets them back into this game. At some point, you just need to roll the balls out and say, we need to be who we are. And that's up-tempo. That's move with pace, pass it with pace, attack with pace, play defense with pace. They just haven't been able to do it, partially because they haven't been able to get stops. But I think being down makes it makes you a little reluctant to attack. There's a return of Preston. I, you remember the... The guys like C.J. Massenburg, Jeremy Harris, yeah. who came through this program, when they were beating Arizona in the NCAA tournament, it was in large part because of that pace, and they, they pushed yeah. DeAndre Ayton a couple years ago out of the tournament. Yeah, it's one of those things you have to commit to, and committing to it means regardless of whether you're winning or losing, you continue to commit to it. And that's part of the fearless approach that you know, teams, when they're playing really well, that's what they have. Right now, Ohio has it. Nice closeout by Skoglund on Vanderplas. This is Preston to bag another three. I'm telling you, defensively, I don't know how you lose him. You do not help off of Jason Preston. You don't allow him to get a catch. At some point, someone from Buffalo is going to have to take enough pride or find the pride to be able to shut him down. And you talked about pace there. It looked a little bit like they might have been moving slightly too fast as Vanderplas takes a long step to kick it to Roderick for another Bobcat three and a timeout. 
thanks to Jason Preston. I, look, Jason Preston may, he may be making the majority of the plays, but this has been a team effort. They're playing with such great rhythm, collective feel. I mean, look at Thunder Plus, the give and go, and then the show and kick out. I mean, this, this is fun basketball. And I'm telling you right now, if, if you're a power five and you may get this Ohio team in a draw, if they can continue to do what they're doing, look out. Quite frankly, if Buffalo can come back, you wouldn't want to play them either. No, Joe Lenardi's got Buffalo as a 13. They were the highest seed coming into today, so they're in uh, Joe's bracket as Imbala scores again, the Texas Tech transfer. But Ohio, they could be a 13-14 type seed line, and that's where they've won games yeah. from in the past. Oh, back caught and Preston scores. Wow. Wow. I mean, part of, part of the feel I talk about is making the right or good reads. As a team, they're doing that very well. And Ohio has like 15 defenders on the floor and 10 of them are on the bench right now. Javon Graves saw the closeout, missed the shot, and Bala wrestled away the rebound. Nice closeout on Segu as Gruden misses by a lot. Like a lot. And that is a foul on the other end against Bruton. Like to praise highlight plays, but look, good execution is not too bad either. Lob over the top. Beat that overplay. College basketball is presented by SoFi. Get your money right. Hey, Ohio fans over the last decade know Armand Bassett and DJ Cooper and all those guys that got him wins. Buffalo the last couple years when there was an NCAA tournament taking out the entire state of Arizona in successive seasons. But uh, look, Jason Preston of Ohio has made or assisted on 10 field goals for this 17-point lead. What do you like most about this young star for the Bobcats, John? Honestly, that's a good question. I, I, I don't really know where you start. I, I think ultimately it's the fact that he plays as if the game is easier than it really is. He doesn't force things. He doesn't have to try as hard as others do. And that's that's that feel part of the game. You know, most guys have to get old to realize that. Like when I played in college and played professionally, I felt like I tried so hard. Yet when I walked away from the game and, and came back a couple of years later, I was like, why was I doing all that? The game's simpler than this. And that's because he developed the, the intellect, uh, the, inte uh, the, the intellectual side of the game. He seems as if he's already got that. He knows how to manipulate the game. He knows how to manipulate his own defender, but he also understands how to manipulate the other four defenders. And that's really, it's really impressive. Ronaldo Segu misses a three and Bala going hard for that and it's plucked away by Ohio. Our colleague Tim Welch wishes that you might have played a little bit less considering what you did to his Providence team in the NCAA tournament once, John. Hey, you know, I got CBS player of the game for that. So thanks, Tim. Yeah, he's... All we do is rub in Tim Welch's NCAA tournament history, I think, whenever we do games together. If he didn't remind me of it, I would never say anything. And follow the defense, that's going to be a travel. Now, that was better defense because they didn't leave Preston. I, I think you have to, f at some point, you have to force other guys to make plays. And it's not this whole concept. Everybody says, oh, you got to force somebody else to beat you. Well, somebody else can beat you too. Force someone else to make plays because that's going to disrupt the rhythm that Ohio has right now. And as you get disruptive on that end, you create opportunities here with the advantage you may have. And Mbala is one of those guys. John and has got nine of their 15 and it's been an ultra quiet night for these guards for Buffalo Vander Plaas Man Ohio by 19 just waxing a Buffalo team they lost to by 20 in late February Preston Talk about confidence. That hit the back iron and the rebound for Graves. See if Buffalo can make something of this off the long miss. Segu catch and shoot. Oh my goodness. And Ibala scores. Segu is 8 for 11 from 3 in the MAC tourney the first two games, and he just has not had it tonight.
Yeah, well, that was, that was one he just had to rush. It was a great closeout by Preston, but he had to rush, didn't get his feet set. Sugu could be a much better shooter, but he's got to work on his shot footwork. At times, he just comes to a wide jump stop, and, and he's a little off balance. If he gets his shot footwork right, he's going to make a higher percentage and also get a higher percentage off. Yeah, what? Wilson against Mbala. Wilson thought he was fouled. He's got six. How'd you know that? <laughs> oh, I don't know. The, uh, 150,000 decibel and one. <laughs> Nathan Williams hits his go. first jump shot. Junior out of Rochester needs to score if Buffalo is going to come back. And I think he can do more scoring inside, really carving up the defense, making hard cuts. The problem is that, that rhythm hasn't been there offensively for Buffalo, partially because they haven't gotten the pace where they need. When we get a stoppage, I got a story about people yelling stuff on the court from earlier this year that I think you're going to enjoy. There's two more for Wilson down low, and so the big guy for Ohio out of Tallahassee has eight. This great ball movement. Gold baseline, flattens out the defense. You try to take out that baseline drive, baseline drift on the opposite wing, and you're wide open in front of the rim. Javon Graves, no, and Bala working hard to get a piece of it to allow Harden it to go to the free throw line. Hey, the Audi halftime report will have an update on that Memphis-Houston game that's completely in our way. And then uh, Oklahoma State and Texas as well, plus the Hoyas leading in the Big East tournament. So, John, good story, I was doing, huh? That's a good story. Yeah, I, I was doing now, a Purdue game. Tell your story. I was doing a Purdue game earlier this year. Somebody yelled short on a shot, and it absolutely was not. The ball went in. And I asked Eric Hunter a couple weeks later, the Purdue guard, who that was that yelled short. And his answer was, it was probably Matt Painter. I said, what, your coach <laughs> yelled short? He said, I had a shot yeah. that I took in Florida last year right in front of paint. He yelled short at me, and it went in, and I turned to look at him. So there are coaches yelling short. I love how coaches will talk their own players and players will talk back. We're like, it's a Got family. One. It is good. How about Panther and the job he's done? Goodness gracious. Oh. Uh, but that team is going to be loaded for years to come. That freshman class is outstanding. Vanderplas set up Preston. Oh, dueling open looks and Preston sinks it. Jason, I, I really don't know what to say about him. 17 points on 7 of 12 shooting, 3 of 6 from 3, 4 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 steals. Holy smokes, what a performance. He's just I don't know if I can top orchestral magistry, but we'll just show highlights and maybe just tell the story that way. The kid's been that good. I, and I, there are times, I got to say, this is a championship game. I'm in full disclosure, I'm being honest. Championship game, you want to serve the interest of both teams well. But this kid's balling out, and he is making this Ohio Bobcat team just near unstoppable offensively. The Bulls are going to have to find a way to get back into this game. They're going to have to do it by taking the ball out of Jason Preston's hands because even without the ball in his hands, he's finding new ways to make plays and make his team better. And, John, this is, a, this is a really strong Buffalo team, the best remaining team in the MAC yes. coming in. They're the two seed. They've won seven straight entering the game. And Ohio uh, has held them to 23% from the four nine turnovers. And I was saying at the break, if, if only Jason Preston scores for the rest of this game for Ohio, will Buffalo be able to win the game down 20? I mean, he's been able to impact the game that much. I just want to see what kind of response Buffalo has out of the, out of the half. If you're just joining us, we introduce you to Buffalo, who's won four of the last five of these MAC tournaments. As that ball is on the deck yet again, and a battle for it, and what are we going to have? We got a whistle, and they're going to say it is Buffalo basketball. You know, there's one guy in green who didn't go on the floor for that ball, and... Look, if I'm Jeff Bolt, I'm okay with that. <laughs> it was Jason Preston. Vanderplas the defense, and that is out of bounds. As Ohio is led by the second-year head coach, Jeff Bowles, who in an Ohio jersey brought the Bobcats to the NCAA tournament back in 1994. And you look at it, they've had 11 games canceled or postponed. They missed three weeks once and two weeks another time. You know, it's interesting because some teams, when they have those pauses, they lose it. It takes them a while to, to find it again. There have been other teams, and Ohio may be one of them, where a pause allows you to get rid of some bad habits. 
and it almost happens naturally. They, they've really just turned the corner here as of late, and Ohio's playing the best basketball of their season without a doubt. Second chance, no good for Dwight Wilson, and now Buffalo with a run out here. They have not been in transition much at all today, as Josh Mbala, the Texas Tech transfer, misses. Graves is fouled, and you see some energy bubbling on the Buffalo sideline. I mean, that's exactly what you need to see. Just just something to give you some sort of confidence that you can get back into this basketball game. And, and it's amazing that one stop and a run out, a second chance opportunity, and now an opportunity at the foul line gave them that kind of hope. Well, in this series in the past, in 2005, these two teams met in the MAC final, and Buffalo was up 17 at the half. Ohio came back to win and deny Buffalo its first MAC tournament title. So there's a history of big comebacks in this series. And we shall see tonight as Graves goes two for two, the senior out of the state of Ohio. Was Jason Preston playing on that team? He was not. Oh, okay, just making sure. Thank you for checking. That would have been a lot of eligibility. Vanderplas had it knocked away by Mbala, who's got very active hands and comes off a 20-rebound game in the semis yesterday. He was a guy offensively who really started to push it and try to attack and create some opportunities. I'd look to go to him again, but he's going to have to help seek out some opportunities as well. That's Ronaldo Segu, who's now 0 for 7 from the floor. I mean, John, he could not miss in the, the first two games of the back tournament. Yeah, look, he made our open segment for a reason. And it wasn't just because we wanted to compliment the Jason Preston part with another guard. He was that good. I mean, he really attacked, played with that confidence, played with the swagger as if he had a chip on his shoulder, something to prove. All those other cliches we could throw out there, that's what he did. I'm surprised that he hasn't been able to figure out and get it going so far tonight. Preston to drop off. Wilson fills the lane for two. The first field goal for either team this half. So Jason Preston, five assists, four rebounds, three steals, 17 points, and a foul on the rebound action against Ohio. Somebody just said, I didn't touch him. I think it was Vanderplas based on his body language. I mean, usually when someone says, I didn't touch him, we, we watch the replay and realize that it, it was an absolute foul. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know about you, like, every time you see someone hammer somebody else, they act as if they did nothing. But, but how do you feel if the guy says it three times? Vanderplas just said it two more times after that. Do you, oh, do you that, believe him? That means he's serious. Might have got him on the arm, but let's be real. Considering how this game has gone and how physical yes. it's been at points, geez. Well, all you need to know is how fast it's gone. If the game's gone fast, they're allowing it to be physical, and they're also allowing a little flow. That's one of the things that the college game needs to make sure we get right. All these, these whistles and delays and look at the monitor. You're actually impacting the game and taking the rhythm and flow away. Not only is it a harder game to play, it's less fun for us to watch. Absolutely. That was the toughest possession Preston's had all night. Graves was absolutely stapled to him defensively. And Sagu goes baseline. That's four in a row for Buffalo. Yeah, and that's you got to capitalize on those opportunities in transition. Ohio's been good in terms of their transition defense, but there's still opportunity. They're not set. The idea is attack before the defense sets and sees the basketball. Junior out of Wisconsin, Vanderplas into the lane, a tough shot. Buffalo's been much more engaged defensively. Mbala stepped through, no. Second chance will get two free throws for Buffalo. So, we tell you what's coming up next on ESPN. Pac-12 title game, a possible bid stealer in Oregon State against the Colorado Buffaloes. Oregon State beat Oregon yesterday. If you caught that game, it's 10.30 Eastern time. You can watch anywhere on the ESPN app. And there are some teams very interested in that, especially after Georgetown is doing what it's doing against Creighton tonight to steal a bid in the Big East. Seventy three forty eight Georgetown wow. obliterated Creighton. Wow. Pat Ewing, Pat Ewing better have his credential. <laughs> 
uh, the world's most famous arena, but evidently not the world's most famous uh, center. I mean, my favorite thing about it is how annoyed he was. Like that, because he was right to be annoyed, and I thought he just shared it. He's like, are you kidding me? My jersey up there. I built this place. Right. That's right. Here's Vanderplas, and they're going to say he was fouled. So, uh, look, if you're just joining us, Jason Preston owned that first half for Ohio, and, and he is one of the stars in this league. He, he was totally unrecruited. 52 points his entire high school career before he went to spend one season at prep school. He shows up at Ohio off a tape that he edited together that was mostly assists. And now he leads the Bobcats, and he's 16 minutes away from the NCAA tournament. But Buffalo's locked him down here in the second half. Define locked down. <laughs> I, think, I think the kid's going to be able to continue to impact the game just like that give and go. But, but, I, but I'm just saying the space in front of him has not been as uh, open. I just wanted to hear you explain yourself. You went far between. Knicks next. Late. Buffalo's on the comeback trail, plus five during that segment after trailing by 20 at the half. 21% uh, from the floor, 18% from three. Uh, what do you make of that affable John Crispin? Well, look, uh, Buffalo's been better at, at attacking, just trying to get inside the paint. They've created some opportunities on some, some re offensive rebounds. But I'm going to say Ohio has kind of taken their foot off the gas. They don't have the same energy that they finished the half with, and that would be what concerns me the most. I still think they're going to find it. I, I do think it's tighter defense on Jason Preston by Javon Graves, though, and, and you disputed that going to the timeout, so defend yourself. No, I, it's not that it's not tighter defense. They're doing a better job off the ball with him so he doesn't get it back. He's still allowed to get the ball. They're just recognizing that he's a threat even without the ball in his hands. We'll watch that next offensive possession and see what Buffalo's doing as Mbala gets in for two and a foul. He was a game changer yesterday and in the first round as well for the Bulls who are within 13. Yeah, and that's one of the guys we said in terms of matchups. So we talked to both coaches this morning and, and they felt that this was a matchup that Buffalo could exploit. The physicality, the aggressiveness, the ability to finish around the rim, but also attack from the perimeter in. He has shown tonight already the ability to get right and then spin back to the left multiple times. That was the fourth foul against the reserve big Colin Granger, a freshman out of the state of Georgia. As Zimbala misses the free throw, a young man who transferred from Chris Beard's Texas Tech program. Vanderplas with a long step into the lane. Wilson was denied right by the rim, and the second chance is there. And Jason, you could already see that they're defending the ball screen differently as Jason Preston comes off. They send two his way to contain and then scramble back out. Graves a drop off. Harden it blocked by a sea of green. And get a foul against Segu there. That'll be his second personal. No foul trouble to speak of for Buffalo, which has really become a dynasty in the Mid-American yeah. Conference. Nate Oates uh, and now Jim Weitzel, they've won four of the last five MAC tournaments. And it really helps that you do, again, come in and take advantage of the identity and, and the expectation that's already here. I think that's the, the biggest thing about it. That's how you maintain that dynasty through multiple different coaches. And we've seen the pace pick up a little bit as Segu has made a couple of odd decisions tonight. As you see, the Kent State only outlier in that Buffalo vast victory panel. Harden it way off. Well, Preston testing the gas pedal down to the floor with it, and this is out of bounds off of Ohio. Well, look, if you're going to test the gas pedal, you better keep your head up. <laughs> that was the issue there. You've got to keep your head up, be on balance, be under control. I think part of that was, uh, that's a bad miss. I think part of that was Jason Preston has been taken out of this game a little bit. You know, whether it's sending to his way on the ball screen, he's going to force this in transition, yet the help's there. And ball a second chance. Pinball for Buffalo and finally secured by Sears in Ohio up by 15. You can hear how physical it is rebounding Ooh. down in the paint. Feel it at home, I think. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, 
Sears a little hesitation. And that's taken away by Graves. Easy hit ahead, and Jonathan Williams draws Buffalo within 13. So the turnovers are mounting for Ohio. Buffalo on the comeback trail. All right, so this is game three in three days for Buffalo. Jim Weitzel's basically got an iron five that he plays a whole lot. What do you make of this with the lack of bench? How does it affect Buffalo in the final 13 and change, John? I don't worry so much about legs uh, as I do about finding rhythm. And if you have a group that can find it, roll with it. Especially considering this is a championship game. I like the, the teams that go maybe six, seven, eight tops in the NCAA tournament because it's sustained rhythm. Once you find it, one or two guys doesn't disrupt that through, throughout the rotation. Five might be tough. You might want to find an extra body out there, especially if you get down the stretch and there is foul truck. Well, yeah, Buffalo it just hasn't played really a five-man much of tonight as Bertram does check in off that bench. Brock Bertram's only played four minutes so far. As Ohio's got a little cavalier with the basketball here in the second half. Roderick buries a three and a big time for the Bobcats. Yeah, that's just good for, for Ohio to be able to see the bench pop up again. Create some energy. I, I said in the last couple minutes, it almost has felt like Ohio's starting to play not to lose. They need to continue to be the aggressor if they want to win this basketball game. Buffalo will make a run. Mbala dropped the shoulder. Offensive foul against Mbala. You're right, Chad. This is, this is the highest scoring team in the MAC, held to 32. But you have to anticipate that they will. And the only way to keep them from making a run is to continue to attack offensively. Because, again, offensively, you make shots. You play against a set defense if you're Buffalo. You don't want to play against a set defense. You want to be able to create pace with good defense and runouts. First half, it was all the way of Ohio because of what they were able to do scoring-wise. Mm -hmm. We saw Granger, by the way, on the bench. He's got four fouls, so he is back in his role as leader of the bench energy as Preston turns the corner and scores for Ohio. Took off the, the wrong foot, usually going to the right side of the basket, take off the left foot, finish with the right hand. He actually was goofy footed, taking off the right stick finish. Granger's doing manic jumping jacks on the sideline, by the way. So he is uh he is the intensity leader on the sideline for the guys from Athens. Roderick carves the lane and takes a big hit. It's a block and two free throws coming for Ben Roderick. It's amazing what happens. You make a shot and, and you move to seek out your next shot opportunities. And I think that's the, the challenge for guys. Sometimes they need to make a few shots to find out how to get yours. You've got to find a way to do that early in the game. Be aggressive. Seek out shot opportunities as if you just made five in a row. It's free throw good here, Ohio's third of the ball game. Tomorrow night, NBA returns. First game of the second half on ESPN. Kawhi and the Clippers against Zion and the Pelicans. Always fun to look at his shot chart post game. Coverage starts on ESPN and the ESPN app. Nine Eastern, six Pacific. We had a couple possible NBA guys in this game, especially Jason Preston, the guard for Ohio, who took over the first half as Sagu steps back and misses again. And Bala, boy, does he treasure second chances. Yeah, well, look, he understands what this team needs. They're not getting anything offensively, and, and you have to understand you're going to give up some some opportunities with Jason Preston on the floor. So, so you have to capitalize on missed shots as if it's another opportunity to score, and he's done just that. That dude's got a double-double, his third straight, and there's more than 11 minutes left in this game. He's got 15 and 10 in Bala does. double-double, too. Buffalo wanted to travel. Instead, they get the rebound. And Bala builds on that quiet double-double. The rebounds have, have been the quiet part as Sagu dances into the lane for two and a foul for Buffalo. You never know, champ with 14 points isn't a whole lot, we'll find out. Down here in the second half, and Ronaldo Segu, who was very quiet in the first half, starting to tune it up a little bit, John. And he's going to have to be the guy. Uh, I mean, without a doubt, Josh and Bala can dominate this basketball game if given the ball in the right spot in the right situations. But that comes down to the guards. How are you moving the defense? How are, mani how are you manipulating the game? Ronaldo Segu's got to be that guy. He's got to take advantage of opportunities early in transition. If you can attack quickly, 
go get to the rim because we've seen Buffalo's been able to capitalize on some second chance opportunities. Buffalo Bulls winners of seven straight. Ohio has taken eight of the last nine coming into this MAC final tonight, trying to get back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since the Sweet 16 team in 2012. Preston, a tough mid-air pass. Bertram walls up and knocks it out of bounds. It'll be one to shoot for Ohio, but Bertram has played pretty sturdy minutes the last couple for Buffalo. He has, and that might have been the greatest dive of the season. <laughs> I don't think, I honestly don't, that didn't sound like a sincere laugh, Jason. I, I need more from you. I, I don't think he was within 10 feet of getting that ball, but you've got to love the effort. If you watch the bench after he does that, it gets them all up. And that is the shortest one second in human history. Now, we don't have, we don't have tenths of a second there. Look at this hustle. Go get it, big fella. <laughs> That deserves great. a real laugh. That's great. That a boy. That's how you lift up your team a little bit. Show how, show what hard work does. We, we were like one step away from a timber coming from the forest yeah. in the background. Javon <laughs> <laughs> Graves hard. hopping in the lane. Oh, Bertram spins it back out. Cigar three in a 10-point game. That is absolutely huge. So many guys will tell you, well, it's because you got it to 10. Now it feels like it's a basketball game. No, it's that the rhythm's falling your way. The pace is picking up. You got offensive rebounding opportunities, and Bertram did the right thing. He kicked it back out. Yeah, to your point, that dive, though, built the energy. I mean, it's yes. a small thing like that, but you're right on it. Some would call it fake hustle, but it actually has an impact. Get it down. Swatted by Bertram. Oh, the like big this, bearded bull is going to town. I feel like this is kind of like Walker Kessler with North Carolina. He's come in, and all of a sudden you're like, where's this kid been the whole season? Bertram, where you been all game, man? He's had an impact. Vanderplas knocks it down from the corner and a huge shot. Oh, man, and that's tough for Buffalo. They played great defense. They <laughs> Kept it alive here by making some big shots and offensive rebounds. And that's just a big, tough shot. And now Ohio makes it a one and done. Yep. Preston with the screen from Wilson. Oh, Two man wow. game. He shuttles it there. Wilson got it and a foul. energy drink from that guy the, the pocket pass from jason preston is what i'm most impressed with but beyond that look at the sit down he gets around the screen he knows his defenders on his back left hip and he keeps him there he doesn't just go right at the defense and, and, and take away all the space here in the play he waits he pauses and when bertram doesn't commit and stands in the middle he throws that little pocket pass real quickly easy layup opportunity for wilson we asked Jason Preston today what his job is, what a good sign is for him today, and he said, putting my teammates in great positions. He has always been a passer. He grew up watching LeBron James, but specifically the passing portion of the game. And you see it again there as Buffalo comes up short from Williams, and this will stay Buffalo ball with 14 to shoot. You wonder if there's one more run for the university at Buffalo. Well, I, I think there's another run. It's just whether Ohio is going to continue to keep their foot on the gas. Yeah, you got to continue to play to win the game, not play not to lose. Got a little Herm Edwards in you there. Oh, it's play to win the game. The play not to lose. Trip. Can't play not to lose. Keep your foot on the gas, and this kid knows how to do it. Preston wants a goaltend. He's not going to get it. Graves for Sagu. And Ohio got back well, John. And Nathan Williams is fouled. Yeah, they did. They got. They did a good job getting back. So you get back, you stop the ball, you identify threats, and then you play defense as a team. You, you could see the progression there that where they stop the ball, identify threats, close out, get your defense set, but then they got beat off the bounce. I mean, that, that's just the, the effort part of it, and that tends to be one of the easier parts, just apply the effort. 
Bertram the screen, Sagu missed the three, and the rebound down to the deck for Vanderplas, who hooks it ahead for Preston, and he will double it back. I thought for a second he was going to go play one on two and say, come on, bring it. Yeah, I would look to get in some, in some ball screen situations with Vanderplas, mainly because Vanderplas is going to pick and pop. And just watching the way they've defended keeping two on the ball and Jason Preston for, for a little extended period of time, that pick and pop's going to be there. He's going to take there it is. himself. There, there is, is Vanderplas trailing. He saw it. He saw it. Great set. Great set. Look, he was in the pick and pop. He just wasn't one the one setting the screen. He started down on the baseline. They roll hard. Jason Preston goes to the basket. He knew exactly. Should be a great one. Matt Schick will preside over that. Hey, uh, John Crispin. Yeah. Uh, Jason Preston's turned up the uh, the eyes again. Love this play where you, where you hard drive to the basket on that pick and roll. You roll hard, flatten out the defense. Vanderplas sprints up. You don't need a screen because you're flattening out the defense with the basketball and the hard roll. Defense fell asleep. Vanderplas wide open. Two, two consecutive big threes. Really two big threes for Vanderplas. And Vanderplas out of Fond du Lac County in Wisconsin, a junior who is a very good stretch four for Ohio. Up by 19 is Javon Graves. Had to have it for Buffalo and did. Yeah, good set out of the timeout. Just flaring that screen out. Good find. You got to take the ball over to be able to deliver a, a pass that he can catch and shoot. Good execution out of the timeout. Worth mentioning here, John, neither of these teams are a very good free throw shooting team at all. Buffalo is 299th in the country. Ohio's 210th. I mean, you almost have to try to be that bad. Oh, great cut. And Preston and Ohio make it an 18-point game. I really think about that. I mean, it's, it's, these are good shooting teams. Yeah. These are yeah. offensive-minded teams. How are you that bad shooting free throws? Not that they're not trying. Were you always good from the free throw line? I, I, I can't ever remember being bad, but you weren't you know, at like I, nine, I, just a terrible free throw shooter. No, I, honestly, I, I, I just grew up shooting free throws with my brother, and we practiced a lot. We argued and fought over who could make more, and we played in free throw shooting competitions. That, that's what you do if you can't dunk when you're nine years old. You go in free throw competitions or maybe hot shot competitions. I thought, I thought Joe was about to get tossed under the bus for a second there, but we narrowly avoided that. Yeah. Press to the kick, late shot clock, and that's going to be a shot clock violation. It might have been anyway as Brown went to the ground. See, Look, I find that Ohio gets better, better shots if they attack early. Every hmm. possession we've seen where they've taken their time, it's been a bailout big shot like Vanderplas from the from the corner. But if they get into their action early, you put the defense into a scramble mode where now they're chasing the play. When they chase the play, it's long closeouts and driving kicks. That's when you get your best shots, but you got to attack early. Graves another one. I have Buffalo is within 15. They've been hanging around this uh, nearly out of double figures area, but haven't cracked it yet. Well, now you make a couple shots and you're able to stop the suppression and keep the ball out of Jason Preston's hands. That, that's number one. Preston has scored 52 points in his entire high school career. Ends up at Ohio, one of the best players in the MAC, and now Vanderplas was going to turn it outside. And that'll be 16 fouls against Buffalo. So you do have to cherish these one and ones here, John. If you're going to yeah. give them, you might as well give them on the ground. Yep. Yeah, and, and as you mentioned, teams that do not shoot the free throws very well. Now, something else you got to watch out for, if they're going to overplay Jason Preston, it would actually be to the benefit of Ohio if he just spaced out. Oh, London McDay took it right across the bridge for two and a foul. There's good spacing on that play. Jason Preston was actually wide open on the back side. But McDay able to get to the rim and finish. But but I want to go back to that point. If you're going to be face guarded, if you're Jason Preston, you're being face guarded for a five-minute period, just stand 35 feet away from the basket. Because what you're doing is you're forcing four on four in the half court. Four on four is hard to cover. That's a lot of ground to cover. I would trust the rest of my offense in four on four situations. Another takeaway. Man, Ohio has held off Buffalo all night long, and now we'll see how they do it as you see Colorado, Oregon State 
coming up on ESPN in just a little while to see if the uh, Beavers can steal a bid. That's a travel. Next play. I love I love the things we get to hear this year. Oh. Like it's tremendous. Look, I, one thing I don't need to hear ever again is when someone blocks a shot. Like we know. Give me that. Like we know you blocked the shot. It's like the thing. We need to come up with something new for a block shot. Hey, I like when people say and one and they're not even shooting. <laughs> One or when they don't get fouled, it's the offensive flop. That's what it is. And one on that last play, somebody just yelled, "That's the same thing." Meaning, I just had it happen to me on the other end. <laughs> Why do you call it now? I... Oh, the things we hear. No, it's great. Hey, Jonathan Williams has not had a great game, but he has been one of the real leaders on yeah. this team. He grew up in Rochester. He wanted to stay home to play college basketball, and, and he, he told us earlier this year when he was younger, he used his speed so much because he played with his dad in, like, men's league games in Rochester when he was a real young pup, and he would just be the fast break guy running circles around, like, the 35, 40-year-old guys with slight guts. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I bet those 35, 40-year-olds loved him. Oh, yeah. You know, when think about that. On their team. You're just out there for good good exercise, and you got to chase that around. Yeah. Preston, great look. Wilson, the finish for Ohio. It's an 18-point lead for the Bobcats. That's going to be a foul against Vanderplas. John, we, we see Preston again here. Do they give him the assist in college for that one dribble that was taken? You know, in the NBA, when you, you know you could pass the ball, and the player just goes in a full-on ISO, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, 50 dribble move, and you get an assist for it. In college, they really make you earn your assists a little bit more. Uh, most places do. There is, if, if somebody's going for an assist record and it's a home game, though, oh yeah, if if, if they sneeze on the ball, yeah, it's an assist. Hockey assists count. Oh, yeah. Now the pressure on for Buffalo trying to stonewall the inbound pass, and they do get it in. And here comes Roderick on the attack. Roderick gets it early, too. You like it, right? Yeah, I love the fact that he attacked. You have to attack pressure. There's four and a half minutes left. You have the ability to put the game away if you attack the pressure. Just don't foul. Offensive rebound, harden it. And he got the and one. There's the and one, and you, you heard it all the way in Akron. Yeah, you couldn't hear the whistle because he was screaming and one. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. Look, I'm saying all this. I was probably the worst as a player. I'm, I, I had way too long of conversations with the officials, and that was a foul. But you were close friends with officials? You were teacher's pet? Oh, I mean, to find close. Close this proximity. Yeah, this is going to be Buffalo ball, by the way. Yeah. Well, you're the one that said you had long conversations with him. I was trying to convince him how wrong they were. <laughs> I love listening in on this. Oh, it's great. It's the great. Best. It's the only thing that shuts me up, Jason. That's not true. Braves flaring, missed the three. We could turn your mic down back in Charlotte. That is true. Moving down to four minutes in the second half in the Ohio Bobcats, led by a former Bobcat himself, Jeff Bowles, yeah. who still gets flack from his teammates from 1994 for his game against Indiana in the first round. Like, <laughs> there's still shrapnel on the text thread that he gets from his yeah. teammates for a three for ten. Preston will go to the free throw line. Bowles' star has quite the journey. And we'll tell you about this young man who looks like he's going to the NCAA tournament after this. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by SoFi. Get your money right. Hey. Tournament. It's champ week. There's nothing better. Abilene Christian and Nichols coming up, Jason. Farnham's cutting champ week promos. I love it. Uh, look, this Showing is the reason. Kids. Right? 
Yep. It's true. Look, for, for Jason Preston, this is a huge day. Uh, yeah. You can bet, yep. based on what he said to us right now, that he is thinking about his mother. Yep. Because he lost her when he was a junior in high school. Uh, his mom, Judith, died of cancer when Jason was a junior. He was, as a high school player, a one-time starter. One time his senior year on senior day. And there you see the picture of, of him and his mom. She was the one, John, who taught him basketball and helped him learn to pick things up from the greats. And really infused the type of passer he is today into him and that's this is him as his senior picture he's six foot 140 he's turned into one of the best players in the mac yeah i think she also taught him some perseverance and grace too yeah. i mean you, you talk to the kid you get an idea of the type of poise he has this kid's lived through real life situations you know and a lot of kids have and i don't think we say that enough uh, you know in college basketball we all come from different walks of life we, we all have different challenges some are, are unfathomable and the thought of not losing my mother at 16 it, it's it's hard to fathom and this kid has really grown from it and i, I gotta say he's honoring his mother very well and he obviously talking as that's going to be a shot clock violation talking to him today we gave him the chance to talk about anybody else in his life and obviously there have been yeah. people who have touched him as well and he said i'm thinking about one person and it's my mom and, and you know when this clock gets to zero that's where his mind's going to be and it's it's a beautiful thing that she she taught him to love the game and he's out here doing it at a level that nobody expected but him yes. and her that's one of the greatest stories man 52 yeah. points in high school yeah i'm going to be a division one athlete and oh by the way beyond that i'll play in the nba vanderplus down and what you're saying, John, about the NBA is not pie in the sky stuff. Like he, he's an NBA talent, Preston. You think? Yes, I, I do. I, look, he may not. And I gotta say this right because I don't think people are gonna hear this right. I don't know he's an NBA talent, but he can play in the NBA. He's got such great feel for the game. He's not explosive. He doesn't light you up with highlights. He just goes out and balls. He's the kind of kid that when you really teach him how to run a ball screen at the next level, he makes everybody better. So I do. I think he's the type of kid where he may not shock you and wow you and say, wow, look at that. He just dunked on somebody. That's not who he is. But he makes the game be easier for everybody else. And he makes the game look easy for himself. I mean, that's what it's all about. That's the feel we talk about. He's a special kid. How many times do you remember in your life covering playing college basketball? You've heard of somebody who created their own highlight tape that's basically all passes and not him scoring. That's what he's done. Yeah, that's that's rare. I mean, the fact that he takes that much pride in it, and it's crazy when you become a great passer, you, you actually open up opportunities to score more. We're going to keep the defense honest to continue to be a great passer. You have to start to score. Same thing goes for great scorers. If you're a great scorer, you got to soften the defense up, keep them honest be out of, be, by being able to move the basketball. So he has figured out a way to find the right balance in the game. And, oh, by the way, he gets almost seven rebounds a game, too. Hmm. All right, man, one and one. One and one. It's going to be a one and one coming for Roderick of Ohio. Just 12 of 22 for the year from the line, but that one is good. Champ Week wraps up tomorrow. It's doubleheader on ESPN, the SEC title game. LSU and then Nate Oates, Alabama team, and then Cincinnati and Houston. Those of you waiting for this game saw a lot of Houston uh, earlier today. Kelvin Sampson's Cougars trying to get into the NCAA tournament with a victory in their American Conference tournament, and the LSU-Alabama game should be high scoring as well. Yeah, I mean, call it what you want. Not a lot of defense in that Alabama LSU game, but I'll be tuning in. I, I love offense. Oh, yeah. Why wouldn't you? Sagu scores, and they get a whistle at the sideline. So that's nine fouls against Buffalo, and the last one and one is coming. I mean, talk about the struggles be... from the free throw line. Yep. How about Ohio? Eight of eight mm -hmm. right now, and, and they may have an opportunity to win this game from the free throw line. Preston misses the front end and a rebound for Ohio. Wow. And they'll foul. I mean, Buffalo smartly, John, right? I mean, they, they fouled early to try and expand this game and, and the time left. 
Look, you just have to maximize and increase possessions at this point. If you're Buffalo, the biggest key is you got to get rebounds. If Ohio's going to give you a missed free throw, you better secure the rebound. Shot is good, so it's a 13-point game. Mbala, 15 points, 11 rebounds, 35 minutes, but he has been very quiet down the stretch yeah. for Buffalo after playing his heart out for three days in the back tournament. Jason, I think part of that is the guards have had to really pick up the pace and attack from the perimeter in, and it's just harder when you're trying to score quickly to get it to the bigs. Where's that been all game? Yeah, Sagu buries the jumper. Buffalo's still in it, but they got to hustle. So many good things to celebrate about this kid, and again, he's got a he's got a lot of room to grow. That's not a knock. That's just scary praise. Mm -hmm. 21 tonight, 23 on the average in the first two, and look, he was obviously a talented player when he was on the Mac All Freshman team. But you, you know, you've yeah. watched him from even last year to this year and then later on this year he seems like he's going to keep on growing i mean the upside if you're watching from the nba there's a lot of ceiling there also physically he's going to grow and, and that's where he needs to you know take the big jump because physically is is the biggest jump at the next level you know you can figure out the rhythm and pace of the game the the length of the game i think that's an adjustment you get to the nba the, the length is just greater guys cover a lot of ground you got to shoot a lot. You got to shoot a floater a little higher. You got to make sure there's room to make the pass. But physically, that's where he's got to adjust. And I think over the course of the next season, that's where you put your most work in. And try not to get, I don't want to say too confident, but stay hungry. I think it's it's kind of cliche to say that, but this has been a really successful season. If they can continue to pull this thing out, who knows what they do in the NCAA tournament, but stay hungry. There's still room to grow. Yeah, it, it's don't be complacent about your growth potential. Yes. Is what you're saying, right? Yes. Th thank you for translating for me, Jason. I, words escape me. Do I get 10% of your game check for that? You get paid for this? <laughs> That's going to be an out of bounds as Sagu stepped on the end line. Buffalo turns it over. What, what do you make of Ohio if they do close this in, in two minutes? Like, what type of team can they make life difficult for in the NCAA tournament? It answers anyone. Because teams like Ohio have such strong strengths that you can actually focus on your strengths and not play against someone else's. You know how you, you have these teams like Ohio comes in and say they play, I, I don't know, pick a team, uh, Purdue. Oh, well, we need to do so much to stop Purdue's bigs. Mm -hmm. No! Make Purdue's bigs cover you. And, and they have enough talent. When you see Vanderplus, he's a guy that can do that. Make Zach Eady and Trevion Williams come out to the perimeter. Play to your strengths, not theirs. Because at times when you try to avoid an opponent's strength, you actually maximize their strength. Because now they become more impactful. The game gets easier for everybody else. Then you have to adjust to what they're hurting you with. Now the bigs can take over. So you just play to your own strengths. And for Ohio, it's a strong three-point shooting team. They don't turn it over a whole lot. They're 10th in the country in two-point field goal percentage. And part of that is their drivers like Preston as the second free throw is good for Mark Sears out of lovely Muscle Shoals, Alabama. He picks them up when they're blue. Muscle Shoals sounds better than Pitt in New Jersey. By a mile. Roderick, <laughs> the poster at the end for Ohio. Segu goes high off the glass, but Ohio's going to have to make this a mad scramble, and that was a big old clothesline from Mbala on Brown. For Ohio, you got a little time and score and all that, but if you can get opportunities like this, throw ahead, keep piling on some points. The one thing you have to be mindful of is just that quick attack. The quick counterattack for Buffalo just came too easily, and, and you understand why. Guys are celebrating, and you do want to maintain the poise here down the stretch. You do not want this thing to get any closer than it is already.
because we've seen some crazy things happen already. It is March, you know. Wow. It is. I, I wonder if Colin Granger has a portable trampoline that he has oh, behind man. that table, by the way, because he was getting some lift. I, I mean, did you see the veins popping out? Oh, yeah, he's ahead. <laughs> Jeez. Good he's for those guys, guys, man. He's got Champ Week life to him as Sagu Just, scores again. It's too easy. Yeah, for Ohio, you do. You have to be careful not to let it be too easy because then all of a sudden this last minute 20 gets really long. And the other part, let me just say this, dude. The other part is go get yourselves up by 20. Honor your teammates a little bit by getting them in the game. Mm -hmm. How special would that be? That is a great point. You extend this lead enough, you can, you can get those other guys who are cheering you on and clapping. You want to build morale, that's what you do. If you want to really celebrate together as a team, you get everybody in this game, and you do that by closing. Maybe make it some free throw. There's Mbala leaning in, and he'll go to the free throw line. So you're, you're, you're going to paraphrase Alec Baldwin there and say, always be closing. ABC, look at you. Is that of, uh, what, um, come on. Glenn Gary, Glenn, Glenn Ross. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Coffee yeah, down. Coffee's for closers, Jason. <laughs> Few profanities in there. <laughs> it was, here, here's Zimbala at the free throw line, and you got to believe he is exhausted out yes. after the last two days. Uh, look, at watching him in preparation for this game, you try to figure out what a guy does well, what he struggles with, and, and what I wrote down, the first, first note I wrote down was just worry. Mm -hmm. He just attacks hard, you know, and at times he's a little overly aggressive defensively attacking the offensive glass He picks up some fouls, but you can always ratchet a guy down But it's hard to wind a guy up and I would much rather have a guy that I have to kind of settle down at times I'd always pick him That's how I feel about our partnership as well as we'll get two more free throws and Bala You like to take a look at this keep me, keep me in my place. I get you it was the opposite. I, you don't have to wind you up. <laughs> Sears to the free throw line. Two shots. Two. Freshman guard for Ohio, which again has been ultra dangerous yeah. in the recent decade plus in the NCAA tournament. I mean, you think back to... Their last tournament, they beat Michigan, they beat USF, and they took North Carolina to overtime, led by DJ yep. Cooper. And they were really partying in the Red Brick Tavern in 2012. Is that a place I should know? If you've been to Athens, yeah. Hey. <laughs> okay, I'm just making sure. Hey. Javon Graves with the miss. This is out of bounds, and it's going to stay with Buffalo. A, a great season for Jim Weitzel yeah. and Buffalo if they yep. do fall here. I mean, he has done a tremendous job keeping this thing where Nate Oates had it. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, again, a lot of times you get people come in and they say, I'm going to put my stamp on the program. Well, if you try to change anything with this program, you're crazy because it's really hard to get a mid-major program like Buffalo to the point it was when Nate Oates left. So great job from Jim Weitzel just picking up where they left off. You know, you can put your stamp on things in your own way, you know, coaching to your own personality. Maybe it's the way you manage players, the way it's the man way you manage the different personalities. Maybe it's the way you motivate. You can do all those things, but the identity's been there, and they've had a lot of success. As you said, four out of the last five have gone the way of the Bulls. They took Syracuse to overtime earlier this year and lost, and this looks like it's going to be loss number eight for Buffalo this season as we will get a foul but the Ohio Bobcats and Jason Preston who again went through so much yeah. in high school lost his mother as a high school junior was never recruited at all basically until he zero went traveling star. on the prep school so, yeah <laughs> zero, zero star zero recruit. you're star, right literally it's like if you go to Paul Biancardi and say, hey, Paul, where, where do you think you have me? He's like, dude, I have no idea who you are. He scored 52 points in high school. And look at what the kid's doing. And this is where you feel for it, man. This is real. I've been there. Trust me. I've been there. You feel for these guys. They worked their tails off. They came into this game with all the confidence in the world. They're playing really good basketball. 
But man, you, you run into a, a team in Ohio that's just playing the best basketball as of late. No, by the way, they have the best player in the conference, in my opinion, Jason Preston. Sagu went up and down with it. Second chance was there for Graves and Williams. Jason Preston, 22 points, seven assists, six rebounds, five steals for the Ohio Bobcats. Jason, I'm going to tell you this. We really liked watching Steph Curry in the NCAA tournament. Y'all better check in on Jason Preston. I think he's going to do something special. Feels like one of those guys. The bench is amped. Ohio is going back to the dance. 69 the Bobcats Athens is electric